So I remember the first time I heard of Closed Campus, I had put an ad out on Facebook about Starseed. I wanted to do a benefit show for Starseed. And I, I put out this open call for anybody in the Valley, any musicians, any poets, any artists, anything. And the first, and honestly, the first response I got was, uh, I guess it was from Angel from Closed Campus. And he was like, yeah, we'll do it. And he's like, here's our page. Go and check it so out. I went and to, I guess it was the Facebook band page that they had on there. And, and I saw the logo and everything. And I said, holy crap. It was familiar to me because like maybe a week before I was at the McAllen Creative Incubator uh, for Sunfish Records, like grand opening. And I was walking around and at one of the desks, there was like these little flyers. And it, and it was like a little you know four by six paper flyer and it, and it was like it said youtube facebook whatever and it had a little sign like a do not enter sign it's a close campus and i was like wow this is this is kind of neat this is cool you know like some a band has just set out flyers and it doesn't have anything except their logo and where you're playing they're playing at simon says so i'll go try to catch a show and i never got a chance to catch a show and then one day I was in a pickle because I had promised my friends that I was going to play at this party, this pool party, and all my friends bailed on me. And I was just like, I put another thing out on Facebook and I was like, if anybody out there can like, please help me out, and right away he responded. And I told him right there, I think it was that day, I told him, man, you totally remind me of me when I was young. Because when, when I started in music, when I first had my band going, it was all about getting our music out there. It was about playing anywhere we could play just to get our, our not only our name out but our music out you know have build a build a following you know build a fan base you had to actually play in front of people back then you know it was before the the internet uh craze you know so back then that's the only choice we had so it, it almost seemed like nowadays people were like not even dependent on that but these guys like jumped on the opportunity and i love that and and they came through and they show up at this party and it's like me and a bunch of drunk ass friends you know just by a pool and they set up their stuff and i honestly did not know what to expect because they I start had... playing and i was freaking blown away i was blown away man the original music was awesome the timing was awesome the music was awesome the vibe the interaction with the crowd it was i was totally impressed i loved it and then i was super pumped that they were going to be playing at the star seat show and then when they played at the start seat show they kicked ass again and i love these guys and you know i can't wait to see them <laughs> i can't wait to see them go more places that's the audio hallucination right there <laughs> perfect <laughs> peace we kind of just all met like a month or two ago so that's pretty awesome Except for me and Asus, we've known each other since like, you know. Pre K? Pre K. No, no, it was Kinder, because I didn't kinder, go to Pre K. That's true. I was in Louisiana in Pre K. Sorry, you're so cool. But yeah, we've known each other for so long, so. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, we just got, a, and our, got done. Did we mention the Sunfish meeting? Yeah. Okay. We just, yeah. We just got our sponsorship by Sunfish Records. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Talking about the details for our contract. Dude, we're going to look back on this. Like, remember our first gig? Where I had to, like, sneak out of the house? Oh, my gosh. That was. First time we played at Simon Says, his parents didn't allow 401 us West to Drive, play. Mission, so Texas. He told them that we were having a sleepover for, at my house. And uh, Drive, we snuck him over with us, and we only were able to do half of our set with him there, and then he had to leave. Yeah, we met a, a fellow, um, Ray Pettis, uh, a while back during an, um, something at the incubator for Sunfish Records, and um, he's a local Sunfish artist just as, like ourselves. And um, <clears throat> we became good friends with, well, we became quite well colleagues with him. And he invited us to play at a show, some barbecue for friends that he did. It's pretty fun, um, fed us and, and all. <laughs> He's a really cool guy. He plays the guitar and is uh, his thing on Facebook, you know, looking for people to play at a party. And uh, so, you know, we, we, t we, we answered the call. We were like, yeah, sure, we'll do it. And, you know, we show up to the, to the house party. It's in Mission. 
And you know, it's pretty chill. They got a pool and there's people barbecuing and stuff. Nice open area we were playing. People, people loved us, drunk and happy, gave us shit tons of food. And uh, yeah, we had a good time. Uh, he liked us so much, he asked us to play at uh, Star Seeds, a little uh, show that they did for um, a rock school they're starting. And that was, that was pretty interesting. Like, we got to meet a bunch of hip hop artists, which is completely different in our scene. But hey, all music's good music. We met um, Angel Rodriguez from Sunfish Records. Um. He, he, the guy from Simon Says, and uh, we became um, pretty good acquaintances, and uh, he helped us out a lot. Like we were part of his now uh, artist development program, and it's kind of we we grew well, we're growing as uh, musicians, and helped us do our demo, and hopefully, like we'll be able to stick with them for another period of time, a good now period of time. All right, this is our, uh, what is it today? August 27th show? August 27th. Miss Angel. What's up? Hey, Miss Carlos. That's me. That's where we're going to be playing today, along with some other bands. We had one, it was Brutal Bash. And they, had a, they had a flatbed trailer set up. They had some monster PAs, and you know they had us play there, and that was cool. Some friends of ours uh, from Adam Astor, from Adam Master, they set up the entire thing, and they invited us to play again. And um, we opened up. It was pretty fun because the stage was pretty high and everything just, the whole scene felt pretty legit. When she woke up that afternoon And she called him on the phone She said, baby, it was six in the morning We, we submitted a demo to this, uh, this cafe, it's Moonbeams, and um, you know, it's pretty small, the stage is tiny, and we were like, alright, so what are we, we going to do? I mean, we want to take the amps in there and stuff, the whole drum set, it's going to be super loud. Yeah, the, what's different about this one, we did an unplugged show, which is pretty much just like acoustically. This uh, particular show was a little different than what we were used and, to. And uh, so we're like, alright, so what are we going to do? We're like, right, we'll try an acoustic show, right? And so, you know, Angel just kind of switched over to the acoustic, and I... And when Carlos just stayed on the bass, we just turned him down. First unplugged show that we were going to have, so you know, we wanted to kind of experiment a little bit. I played a set of bongos and a tambourine. And all of the times that I thought I was something else Took a deep breath and looked around and noticed that I couldn't breathe anymore and if I could be perfect for one day And if I knew everything to say and do Alright! Look at that shit. Okay.